Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Here we are again, um, continuing our study in the book of Acts. And so we're going to be in Acts chapter 16, and we're going to look at verses um, 6 through 15 today. And let me just kind of bring us up to speed. Remember last time we talked about uh, uh, Paul uh, went out on a second missionary journey. And uh, before he went out, he and Barnabas had had a, a sharp disagreement. Barnabas wanted to take uh, John Mark with him, and Paul was not uh, willing to take him because he had left the, the team earlier on. And so they had a sharp disagreement. So what came of that is Barnabas took John Mark and they went in one direction and Paul chose Silas and they went in another direction. And so they, the second missionary journey is now, is now off and running. And, and so they, they, Paul goes to Derby and to Lystra and at Lystra they meet this young man by the name of Timothy. And uh, uh, something, there was just something about Timothy that, that Paul really uh, liked and he just kind of stood out to the Apostle Paul, and so he wanted Timothy to, to accompany him uh, or accompany them on the missionary journey. So Timothy came along with them, and so, so now we have uh, Paul, Silas, and Timothy uh, now going and visiting churches and doing different things. And so let's look at verses, uh, chapter 16, verses 6. We're going to look at 6 through 10, first of all. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Messia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mycia, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul at night. A man of Macedonia uh, was standing there, urging him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into uh, Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And so after visiting the churches in uh, the mission team now, uh, going down, and, and verse 6 says that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Now, uh, we're not told exactly how they were forbidden. You know, I, I start thinking about that, and I start start wondering: Did they receive a vision? Did they, did the Lord withdraw His sense of peace from them? Uh, was there a sickness that hindered them? Uh, we don't know. We're not told. Luke doesn't go into detail about that, but all he does is tell us that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. So what do they do? They continued on. And so after that, verse 7 tells us that when they had come to Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus says, it says that uh, he did not allow them to go into there uh, as well. And so we see here a situation where God was, was preventing this mission team from going in certain areas. And so what was happening? He was, he was really guiding and directing them to go to where He wanted them to go. And, and the truth of the matter is, God will prevent us from doing certain things and from going certain places. And I call those closed doors. And sometimes God will close doors and open other doors in order to, to guide and direct us to go where He wants us to go and to accomplish His plan and His will. Now, sometimes though, God will close a door and then we go to turn and go into another direction like we see here, and God closed another door. And so now we have two doors that are closed and we're kind of stuck, and I call that the hallway experience where we're kind of stuck in the hallway and wondering what to do. And listen, it's sometimes hard in the hallway. <laughs> sometimes we're, we're wanting to, to, to go in a direction or do something, and, and, and sometimes we're very zealous to do it, and the Holy Spirit says, no, just hang on, just wait. And so Paul uh, uh, listened and, and waited. Paul and the team kind of waited, and uh, um, they go down, so passing, verse 8, so passing by Mycia, they went down to Troas. And so they go down to Troas, and what happens? Paul goes to sleep. And so what that tells me is that Paul had the peace of God, and knowing that he's in the will of God, and just waiting for further instruction. So Paul went, uh, went down to Troas, and he, and he fell asleep, 
and, uh, and God chose um, to use a vision to make his plan known. And so the vision, uh, he had this vision of this man. This man appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia, who was standing there and urging him, saying, Come over to Macedonia. Isn't that awesome? Paul had a direction, a specific direction, that the Lord was leading them into. Now, a lot of times that won't happen. <laughs> sometimes the Lord will give us specific instruction and sometimes He will not. And so we just have to be sensitive. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. But the Lord gave them a specific direction to go. And then uh, when Paul shared this, uh, this vision with Silas and Timothy, uh, they agreed. This is, this is God calling them to evangelize into Macedonia. And notice verse 10, something interesting about verse 10. Verse 10 says, And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we... Now remember, Luke is writing uh, the book of Acts. And, and up until this point, he's, always, he's been writing in the third person. Um, they went and it talks about them. But now here in verse 10, we see that it says, Immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the first of what, we're, what is called the we passages in, in the book of Acts. And here Luke is joining in the team. Um, at some point Luke came on board and now he's joined the team. And so they picked up Luke somewhere uh, along the way and he said, Now we sought now to go into Macedonia uh, concluding that this is where God was leading us to do, to go. That God had called us to preach the gospel to the Macedonians. And so, you know, uh, even though they were in the hallway for a minute, God had closed one door and then closed another door, uh, and they waited patiently, and then the Lord uh, sent this vision, this man of Macedonia, and, and gave them specific instructions. So just for a minute, I'd like to just kind of talk for just a minute about how do we know? How do we know uh, what the will of God is for our lives? How do we know? We want to follow the, the, the Lord's will and we want to do the Lord's will, but how do we know? Well, let me just give you five quick things here to think about. First of all, we begin by obeying the revealed will in the Word of God. We begin by obeying the Word of God. You know, James tells us to be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. So we begin by obeying what God says in His Word. Secondly, we remain sensitive to the Spirit's prompting. Have you ever had those situations where you felt that the Spirit of God was, was directing you or prompting you to do something, to say something to somebody, or to go into an area to do something? Um, and, and so we have to remain sensitive. And, and then again, as we sense that prompting of the Holy Spirit, then we're faced with a decision. Are we going to obey or are we going to do what we want to do? And so again, here, Paul and, and Silas and Timothy, they, they obey when the door closed and the Spirit prevented them from going into Asia and then the other door closed. They listened. They, they didn't try to barge through the door. They listened and, and waited patiently. So you have to remain sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting and, and then be obedient to that. Thirdly, Seek godly counsel when you aren't sure what to do. Seek godly counsel. You know, the, the Bible teaches us that, uh, that it's wise to seek godly counsel. And so we, it's, it's okay to do that, to, to seek uh, counsel from, from godly men. And, and uh, you know, so seeking that counsel when you're just not sure what to do. And then fourthly, Think carefully before making a decision. Don't make rash decisions. Make sure that you're obeying the Word of God that's revealed in the, in the Word of God. Make sure you're remaining sensitive to the, to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Seek godly counsel and, and uh, you know, think about and pray about and seek the Lord before making that decision. And, uh, you know, in a situation like, uh, like Paul and the team were in, they, were, they had like a hallway experience. And so uh, they were just kind of waiting. And sometimes, here, here's the fifth thing. 
don't get discouraged along the way. Sometimes, uh, I, I can just speak for myself, I get impatient. <laughs> I, I wanna run ahead, I wanna do things. I'm, I'm zealous, I'm ready to do something, but sometimes the Lord just has us to wait patiently. And so don't get discouraged along the way. These hallway experiences can be difficult, but listen, if the Lord is leading and He's closed the doors, He will open another door. We just have to be patient and wait. Sometimes doors open, other times doors shut. The life goal, listen to this now, the life goal of the Christian is to be faithful wherever the Lord leads and to maintain a humble and open heart along the way. Listen to what David Livingston said. Without Christ, not one step. With Him, anywhere. Without Christ, not one step. With Him, anywhere. And so we need to have a humble and open heart and, and seek to be faithful to the Lord wherever He leads, whatever He's prompting us to do. And so now let's look at uh, the, the next few verses here. And so they're going into Macedonia. So let's look at verses 11 through 15. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. And we remained in this city some, day, some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come, uh, come together. One, one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul, and after she was baptized, and her household as well, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. And so, um, listen, Paul had this philosophy. As long as God is with us, we have reason to rejoice. Whether we're in a season of perplexity, and wandering or in a season of certainty and fulfillment. And so after their wandering days, this mission team were about to experience some unforgettable days of ministering in Philippi. So they made their way to, to Philippi. Now, they, uh, they, they set sail from Troas and made a direct voyage to Samothrace. Now, Samothrace was a, a mountainous uh, island, and scholars point out that the travelers must have had the wind at their backs to make it to Neapolis in just two days because it was 150 miles from Troas. So they made this, this journey, this incredible journey, 150 miles in just two days. And so the wind had to be at their backs. But don't forget, he is Lord of the wind as well. And so they made it to Neapolis. And then from Neapolis, the team would have walked along the famous Ignatian Way and uh, they would have walked about 10 miles to get to Philippi. And Philippi was a Roman colony and a leading city of the district. And so in it, Roman influence was heavy in Philippi. Now, the missionaries may have stayed there several weeks. We're not really sure. We're not told how long they stayed. They may have stayed there several weeks. And uh, there were probably uh, several conversions that took place during this time. But Luke only mentions three, and we're going to talk about the first one here today. He only mentions three, and so the first one is this wealthy woman. So apparently uh, there was no Jewish synagogue, and so uh, verse 13 tells us they went outside the gate to a place of prayer, and they sat down, and they spoke to the women who had come together. Uh, verse 14, one such woman, Lydia, from the city of Thyatira, who was a seller of purple. Notice that Luke puts in some details about this woman. She probably was a wealthy woman. How do we know that? Well, uh, Thyatira was known as the center of uh, purple dye trade. And uh, because purple goods were expensive, they were often associated with royalty. And so the purple business uh, 
uh, was, was pr very profitable. And so Lydia was probably a wealthy woman. And, uh, uh, and Luke mentions that she was a worshiper of God. Now, this doesn't mean that she was saved already or this account wouldn't even have been in here. That means that the Lord was drawing her to himself just like Cornelius. Remember the story of, of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. The Lord was drawing him to himself and hadn't yet um, uh, saved him. But uh, she was, uh, like Cornelius, she was seeking truth. She was seeking the one true God. And so it tells us that the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. Now, what was said by Paul? The gospel. He was sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And the Lord opened her heart to hear and to receive the good news of the gospel, and she was converted. She was saved. Uh, you think about this. When we hear about the Lord opening her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul, it means that the God of all grace opened her spiritual eyes so that she could embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. God worked in Lydia's heart and gave her new life as she heard the gospel, praise God. So she was saved by grace through faith in Christ. And Paul explained the gospel and the Lord transformed an individual into a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. And notice what happened then. Look at, uh, look, look at verse 15. And after she was baptized. Now again, Luke doesn't include details of her conversion. Doesn't include how, how long of a period of time had transpired. But apparently there was a little bit of time that had transpired. Because notice what it says. After she was baptized and her household as well. And so her witness uh, to the saving grace of the Lord Jesus was contagious. And so her house where, where her household was saved as well. Uh, again, Lydia didn't save her household. Paul didn't save her household. The Lord Jesus Christ saved her household. And so obviously what has happened is now she has gone and shared the gospel of the Lord, the good news to her family, or maybe even had Paul come. We don't, we're, we're not told here, but we are told that uh, her and her household were saved and then they were baptized after salvation. And again, baptism is just a public proclamation that you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. And so, uh, listen, her salvation was contagious. She was excited about what the Lord Jesus had done and transformed her heart and saved her and forgiven her of all of her sins and her household as well. And, and they were baptized as well. And then notice again how it ends. She urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and to stay. And she prevailed upon us. And so Lydia not only shared her faith with her household, she shared her home with the missionary team. And so uh, we see a, a great opportunity that the Lord presented to Paul and the team to share the gospel and see the conversion uh, of Lydia, this wealthy woman, and she's a vital part of the church in Philippi. And so we're going to see some things happen after this. The next time we meet, we're going to talk about another woman that, uh, that the Lord Jesus saves, but we're going to contrast the two. And so we just uh, praise God for the things that he's doing. And as we're taking our journey through the book of Acts, what an interesting journey it is as we see the history of the church. And so until next time, let's... Uh, uh, let's just continue to praise God and continue to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, once again, we just uh, bow before your throne. God, thank you. Thank you for this incredible story, Lord. As we read about the, the second mission team being sent out again now, Lord, as we see, Lord, that they go and encounter uh, this uh, closed-door situation. As the Holy Spirit led Paul and the team, he closed the doors and got them to go exactly where he wanted them to go because he was drawing Lydia and others to himself. And so help us, Lord, to, uh, to remain sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord, would you use us 
Would you guide us? Would you direct us, Lord, uh, to be faithful to proclaim the gospel wherever we go and to be faithful to you in all things? Father, we'll be sure to give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.